Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name's Fringlish and today I'm going to cover Gotwick, more specifically the All Out War, the new event currently going to be going for the next month and we know next to nothing about it. We have the regular rules and patch notes, however it's insufficient for a lot of players so I'm making this guide mainly for my alliance but I'll let everybody else watch as well. So welcome to the All Out War. All Out War is on a map which is fairly big, uh, reminiscent of a couple other events. However, in terms of scale, this definitely eclipses everything. Each one of these dots is a village you can capture, and each one of these fortresses have independent areas you can go into. Today I'm going to focus on the logistics behind this faction and what you can do even as a small player to help yourself along. So let's hop into the map. Your main town will have a municipal centre in it. It will also have a couple other items, such as your barracks, your warehouse, and your armoury. We'll cover those in a second. Your main house will also have different wheat fields around. These allow you to gather wheat resources. The other cities, uh, depending on the type, for now we only have a couple of industrial ones, will have a warehouse as well. However, there are no barracks and no workshop. There are, however, obsidian, silver, and brass mines. These are the different resources used in this game mode, and they're extremely, extremely important. The first thing to do is to create an army. You can do that at any city that contains a barracks. So we're going to start now. Uh, we're just going to go auto-select, and as you can see, you have your commanders. Uh, dragon, you can add. And here, there's an extra slot, which is to do with vehicles. We'll cover those in a second when we go to the actual wagon, but each vehicle is very important. Then you choose the army type, and in this game mode, you can also confirm activation. If you are using a one, a single troop type army, you can turn them into special troops. For more information, you can click here. As you can see, infantry become more armoured, having reduced movement, but taking less damage. Cavalry take more damage, but move an awful lot quicker. And, when they hit people for the first time, they do a whopping 40% extra damage. So these are definitely hit and run troops. Spearmen are great for getting in the thick of things. Once you've upgraded them, they'll take an awful lot less damage from being attacked from multiple directions. And they won't have to worry too much about skills. And bowmen themselves just have an absolutely amazing range increase by 300%. Hopefully I'll cover that more in the combat video, which should come out as soon as I know what in the world's going on. So, there's no point confirming the activation now, as we're not doing any fighting, but I'll do it anyway, just so you can see the range. This green arrow around is the, actually the range of your troop. This is how far they can fire. Uh, if I instead go for a plain spear army... You can see the green range here is a, a little bit smaller. Now, with these armies right now, I'm going to start by showing you how to gather some grain. Grain is going to be very important in the combat. It's very important to get a stockpile. After you've created an army, and as long as it has a resource wagon attached, be it small, medium, or large, you can simply right-click on the wheat field, and it will go and gather some grain as it's heading off now. I'll do this with all three, and I'll come back once I've gathered a little bit to show you how to drop it off. Okay, now all my armies are inside the wheat field here. By clicking on the item, I can see that we currently have 38 different armies gathering, uh, and you can gather 360,000 an hour. If I go then to troop list, which you can click on if you have armies in, I can see that I have three armies currently gathering. It's going to be four and a half hours until they're completely full. Now, I have two options here. I can leave them until they're completely full, and they will return to their base uh, as normal. They shall go to the warehouse over here and distribute the resources. This is obviously what happened to these fellows here. However, if I need the army for something else or want to do anything else, I just simply can pull my armies out and send them over. Now, if I click on an army, you have different options you can click with. Garrison will make them hold position. Uh, click to the city, that's going to be used in awful lot in combat, but uh, you only have certain uses, so avoid using it too much. Enable alert, basically the same as garrison, but they will attack. Recover resilience and self-heal, again I'll cover that in the combat video, because it pertains to those actions there. 
Initiate Rally, the same as soon as someone can initiate a rally, because my stats are crap. Uh, but the main thing is we're going to look here is the Adjust Supplies button. I've left the farms here, but as you can see, I currently still have some grain that I gathered in my inventory. By going next to a warehouse, I can click the Adjust button. Simply by removing the grain from my chests, I can then store it in the location. So we'll make sure I've dropped off all this grain, because we, we will use it. And now I've put it all in the storage. The reverse can also be done inside the when you're next to a warehouse. No matter the warehouse, as long as you control it, you can decide either you know to bring out some brass, carry it with you, or silver, or obsidian, or even wheat. This can be useful to move resources from city to city. At the moment, my faction controls three cities. As you can see here, we have 63 million brass in the first one. We have 42 in the other one, and 70 here. Now these two cities don't contain a workshop, which is what we're going to look at next. Over here is the workshop. This allows you to create wagons, which are going to be extremely important in the fight. You can add, thing, add wagons to the queue and they will get built by players themselves. In order to build wagons, the easiest way, click on the armory, find the one you want to build. Uh, right now we have quite a few which uh, are nearly finished, um, but let's go for one which hasn't been started yet, just to show. I'm going to click on go to produce and you see this production item here. If you then click on an uh, army, then right, then click on the production, it will go straight to it. By doing it this way, you get to assign exactly which wagons you want to be built. It should be noted that once you build a wagon, your armies will be knocked out. As you can see here, these are people who have been building a wagon, then may have gone AFK or something along those lines. So now that the wagons have been built, they are now waiting outside, so have to be reassigned. If you're going to do this, make sure to check in every so often, as wagons can be completed quite quickly with enough people working on them. You have your individual garage, which can contain five trucks, or five different wagons. Here I have three medium resource wagons, so let's go and have a look at the actual different types of wagons. You're going to start off with three small resource wagons. These wagons can be destroyed in combat, that's what happened to mine. Um, we were testing stuff and, well, yeah, that's why I needed replacements. Anyway, so the small resource wagons allow you to gather wheat 5% quicker. You can also gather wheat and brass with that, but that's it. For the medium resource wagons, they cost a million brass instead of 500,000 to make, but you do gain a gathering speed bonus, and you can also gain silver. And the large resource wagon, you gain a resource bonus for the first three, and you can also gain obsidian itself. These resource wagons can either be applied by people applying for them, or if we have any left, such as here, I can distribute vehicles by typing their name in here because I'm one of the lieutenants. There are three other different types of chariots available, not just the small, medium and large, which have varying bonuses, but also the guerrilla, tar guerrilla chariots, which increase total allied attack and are used to initiate a rally, which are going to be very important for taking key strongholds as you need a concentration of power. You also have the positional chariot, and both of these have medium and large variants. The smalls don't have any specific bonuses, apart from like a 10% attack, but the, from the mediums you can see that this one increases the movement speed of 20 random ally faction troops, so not only do you have a big rally attack, you can also buff people around you, or here, you can increase the counteract attack damage dealt, which means as you're running through, if people attack you, they take more damage. Either one of these can be a big bonus. And these larger ones just give you a rather large sort of punching power. They're used for specific locations. The final and probably the most complex one is actually the medical vehicle. Medical vehicle are really only used for logistic armies and we'll finish up sort of the logistics portion of the video on that. The first one, quite cheap, it actually reduces your speed, but increases your logistic troops healing. This is going to be extremely important because of the size of the map and how far you're going to have to go. As you can see, each successive uh, level is more and more apt to heal, but you still have the speed debuff. Now the resource wagons, as I showed you before, you just gather things normally, that's hunky-dory. The 
But how do you use the healing wagon? Or how do you work it in the first place? To do that, I'll just have to reflect, refresh one of my armies. So I'll take the first one here, and once I get close enough to the barracks, I can click Disband Troops. This just sends the army straight back into the barracks, well, if it gets close enough. As soon as they finish moving, I can garrison them in, and then I can change the army well back to what it was. Then I can choose Logistics here. This button down here increases the health and defense. The attack is reduced, however, it enables more items, more abilities for me to use, which you can see in this army. I can choose to recover allies' resilience, I can also choose to heal allies. Now this uses grain in both instances, which is why sometimes you might want to collect some grain from the warehouse. If you open an army, you see currently each army has resilience that gets used when they move. During combat, that can be a problem, because as you can see, a fresh army has 100, so currently I deal 100% and I've taken 100% damage. But you end up taking more damage and dealing less damage the, le the more your resilience goes down. So if you're not being supplied, a whale can get killed by a free-to-play player if they've travelled too far away from their base. By using grain, I can click these buttons to recover my ally's resistance of any, any one of my allies around here. I just need to click click an item and then target. If I click on an allies army, I can see their resilience here. People with 100, they've never moved their armies. Naughty, naughty. Over here, over here you can see 98, again 100, 94. They moved about a bit. This is a logistics army, which means it goes a bit slower, it has more health. Can't, shouldn't really be used for combat, but these wagons are going to be extremely important. At the moment I have a resource wagon, if I was fighting I'd make sure to remove these wagons as they can be destroyed. If I had a healing wagon, it would cost me less grain and I'd be able to reinforce and help people a lot better. Once the combat is unlocked, uh, we're starting the first round tomorrow so I should have some help for you there. I'll cover more of the combat segments, but I'll finish this video on just the top left pass here. For this event there is a season pass that will get you some bonuses as well as other items. I don't bother with that, I've never bought anything so I can't tell you much. But instead you have the all out siege. Now this works mainly around troop deaths and healing. There are some very nice bonuses including these weapon locking ores. These are impossible to get apart from spending black diamonds so it's definitely worth participating just to get a couple because it's the only other place you can get it. Apart from that there's a couple of different items you can get. These are mainly consumables to be used, but with the new dragon, or the lightning dragon, the black bear meat is going to be very useful. Next you have faction quests. These quests reset every day. You have a limit of 1,500 or 2,200 I believe. Yep, if you bought the season path. And these points are very easy to get. If you gather for an hour, you will get this. If you end up building a wagon for about an hour, you will get this. Uh, construction and villages also help at the moment we've got every village construction but they are the small capture all points the town construction is also something that can happen you can actually improve buildings which improves their hit points probably not very useful for us now but definitely with a frontier city we're going to want to be buffing those to stop them from being captured you shouldn't have any problem getting these, and then you can buy rewards, either daily things that do reset, or other items, such as the Lightning Essence, which is very difficult to get a hold of, or special weapon chests. should also be noted that this is a brilliant way to get specific badges. Uh, it is a bit RNG, but if I have any points left, I will be getting some of these badges, because you can choose the type of troop you're using, which means it can fit your playstyle exactly. Finally, you have the shop. This uh, re apparently refreshes every week. Allows you to get different healing items. Seeing as this event is based around killing and healing troops, we're definitely going to need these. Finally, these buffs, these potions, are definitely alliance-wide use. Uh, we tested out by using one of these, and it also applies to my alliance leader. Uh, once I spent this, it did go down. To use one, uh, you just click on the buy and then you click on the area on the map where the armies are situated. So there's different items you can have. You can increase total defense, you can heal wounded soldiers. These are going to be very important items to use at key battles. But please don't use them 
if uh, you're just testing out, otherwise it, it is a waste. You need them for the big combat. Well, that covers most of the logistical side of the items, um, and I hope to see you soon for the next uh, video, where I'm going to try and puzzle out uh, the combat. Although, saying that, I should probably head towards some and collect some silver and brass, because resources are king. If you're not sure about what to do, it's always a good idea to send your armies to collect resources. For grain, if you're on resource gathering, you end up spending about four hours, is your maximum time you can gather. For brass, you actually gather a lot slower, even though your capacity is the same, so it'll be about 18 hours if you're on full gathering tokens. And for the silver mine, it's a day and a half. So if you're going to log off for a while, or can only log in once a day, fill up your troops on the brass mine, that will last about 18 hours. If you have the good resources and good uh, gathering gears and talents, as well as the wagons, make sure to grab silver, as that's needed for some of the higher end items, as well as the obsidian. But if not, grain is always going to be useful. It is going to be how you heal a lot of your troops in combat, which again, we will cover, well, hopefully tomorrow. I hope this video did help you, and I hope to see you in the All Out War. If you have any comments or questions, please post them down below, and I'll see you in part two next time. Take care.